first thing we're going to be doing on this truck today is going to be putting the wheel well liners back where they're supposed to be since it's not the winter months he said that they took them off because in the winter of course it's just going to throw salt and dirt and all that crap off the road trap it up in there but since it's not winter right now we're going to get these things tossed back on well we got the liners set in place however i'm waiting on my screws to dry and what i mean by that is there was no hardware that came with the liners so i just took all these small self tappers and i don't actually have to self tap into any of the trucks paneling so don't worry about that there's already these little metal tabs that you thread into if you can see what i'm talking about you just go through the hole that's already in the paneling which those screws aren't going to cut this out any bigger and there's already like some little metal tabs clipped onto this plastic fender that it threads into it doesn't actually thread into any part of the truck but i just thought i'd paint them black so that they're black instead of gray and they match the truck these should be plenty dry let's get those liners tacked up better so I got all of the self tappers already put in their place you can see all the self tappers in place another one there another one there it actually happened to be like the exact size that all the holes already were so they they just I mean they pulled tight um, but they didn't have to like mill out the holes any bigger really and then of course this side's all in as well you got your one down there over there over there here up in the top in the middle there was a bolt that was already in there i just backed it up and put that in it looks a little bit better with those liners in you don't just see everything going on up in there now what i've got to do is replace the starter on this truck which means i have to disconnect the battery of course which is already done and then i gotta pop off the positive cable going to the starter the small i believe it's an eight mil and then there should be three more bolts on the lower portion that i got to take off drop the starter and take it into Napa and then they'll take that as a core charge and it'll save me about 50% on my new starter. I definitely should have put this thing in the garage so I had rubber mats to lay on. This gravel is pretty sucky. <laughs> on my last bolt I'm going to loosen it up a little bit and once I get it loose enough to where I can thread it out by hand I'm going to lift some weight off the starter by holding it up and then just don't thread it. Just close your eyes and hope you don't get a bunch of crap in them. Well, as you guys can see, the starter is out. It's ready to go to the Napa store to swap it out for the new one. And then hopefully we no longer have to hammer the starter to get this thing to run. We can just turn the key and get it running. Automatic windows. It's nice. So we actually just got back from dropping off our bad starter at Napa. However, we got there at like five o'clock and they said they had a new one there for me, but they actually didn't when I got there. So he's like, I don't know who you spoke to, but we don't have one for that specific truck here. So they said they'll have it for me first thing in the morning. So I was like, oh, well, that's a bummer. Now I've got nothing else to do for my videos because I wanted to get the truck started and running because that was my content plan for today so i guess i'm just not going to do that for now and i am just going to plan on closing the hood and wrapping it up with the first gen for today because i don't have my new starter until morning this truck however did break now before somebody goes down the comments and leaves some stupid comment like oh my gosh you freaking beat the crap out of it you should have known that was going to happen go figure well i'm hoping it's nothing major it just has to do with the braking on the truck and let me show you what i'm talking about so when i bought the truck it had a high pitched squeal sounding like a brake was stuck or slightly stuck like it wouldn't release completely so it made a little bit of a high pitched squeal and other than driving the truck home taking it to the wash this morning and taking this super teeny tiny load across town and back. That's all the driving I've done. I've not been romping on the truck, beating on it, doing burnouts, none of that stuff. You guys know me, I really don't do that other than the donut I did with the first gen and a couple burnouts in the Hellcat that I had, which was made for that. That is as rough as I get with my vehicles and that's, I mean, that's as bad as it gets for me. However, this uh, kind of sucked a little bit. So let's get under here and assess the damage. You can actually see how clean this stuff is under here. The, B&W hitch is brand new, frame's all coated up, it looks really good. I mean, everything else looks great. Here's what happened. If you look at this side and compare it to this other side here, you can see this side here, you've got like this slight rusty-ish, it's not really rust, it's more of like oxidation on the surface right here, okay? This side is not sticking, it's not causing any issues, no problems whatsoever. You can see where the bolts are in on the top, 
right there and the bolts ran on the bottom. That's how it's supposed to be. Now on this side, you can see all this super rough metal, like it's been rubbing or grinding or something. It's just, just not good. It's really wore down pretty bad. It had like a high pitched squeal pretty much since I got the truck. I mean, you could just hear it just just high pitch, you know, just whatever that sounds like when a brake's kind of stuck, but not super stuck. And I could just tell, I'm like, man, that kind of sucks. But it, it didn't bother me enough to be like, I gotta get this to the shop right away and fix it. So I pull up to my house, I put the truck in reverse, and I'm like, it's not moving. And I wasn't giving it any fuel, but you, you shouldn't have to put it in reverse and give it a bunch of fuel to move you know, a thousand pound load. I mean, it's, it's not a big deal. Nothing was happening, truck wasn't moving, so I'm like, okay. Uh, so I hit the fuel just a little bit, just to kind of get it to roll. And uh, I just hear, hook, like a, almost like a snap. And I was like, what the heck? That sucks. Uh, I don't know what that was, but it didn't sound good. I just did a little U-turn and then came back around to try this again and I backed it up. No hesitation this time in reverse, no hesitation at all. Well, that's because the freaking brake completely fell off. You can see it right there. It just snapped. I'm just really hoping that, uh, you can see where it was rubbing right here though. See that? These two little grooves where it was rubbing right there same on this other side i'm using my feet to hold it because it's kind of hot um right here here where it was rubbing on this back edge and i'm pretty confident that's what was causing the squeal itself and just kind of like even when you didn't have your foot on the brake you just heard a little bit of squeal and you're just like what the heck is it well i mean that's probably what it was is that touching and constantly giving it a slight rub in terms of why that broke I really don't know why that broke. But if you look at this, it looked like it was originally mounted on properly because you can see the rubbing there. Not that that's supposed to happen, that's not what I'm saying, but I'm saying it would have been sat down in there all the way to be able to rub down on that portion there and that portion there. And then it looks like that top bolt fell out because you can see it's missing and it's missing there. Top bolt fell out. And then since it was dangling, it was starting to rub just right there pretty bad. And then when it completely broke, is when that snapped off and then it just dropped. So it looks like the rubbing issue might have vibrated that bolt out, the top one, and then after the top one went, you know, the bottom one snapped right about here at the driveway. So hopefully I tried to explain what happened thoroughly enough so you guys can understand what happened. I did already message Cody about it and I'm not mad about this, just so you guys know. Don't anybody pick up on this as like me trying to nitpick about the truck and complain about stuff. This stuff just kind of happens. It's it's old stuff, it's used. When you use stuff and it's older stuff, just little stuff like this can just happen. I, hopefully it's not a big deal. I'm gonna take it to the shop tomorrow, hoping they can just take the wheels and tires off, basically take off this bolt, this nut here, here, and the other two on the other side. And then I'm hoping that this back piece that the caliper is mounted to can just pop off and a new one can be put on. I don't know for sure if that's how it works, but hopefully that's all they have to do. And it's a fairly easy fix and nothing complicated. I'm guessing that's all they have to do, but I don't know yet. Guys, thank you so much for watching. Don't forget that if you wanna to enter to win our truck of this month that we are giving away, it's a 1997 Ford F350 with the 7.3 Power Stroke diesel in it, plus $5,000 cash comes with the truck as well. And if you wanna to enter to win it, it's this simple. Go to lmpgear.com, there's a link in the description below, or just type this in your Google search bar and look up the website. And every $1 spent on anything on the store gets you one entry to win that truck that you see on the website plus the five thousand dollars cash thank you guys so much i'll catch you in the next video peace